Welcome everyone to a uh, another dreadful, miserable, terrible edition of uh, I'll Hang Up and Listen. Sabres lose to Carolina, six to two. Um, Malcolm Subban got pumped for six goals before eventually leaving the game with an injury, uh, bringing in Aaron Dell, who uh, made four saves and four shots. Um, uh, Subban in his uh, again in his debut. Uh, 19 saves and 25 shots against. Not a very good outing, but I, you know, he didn't really get a lot of help in front of him. Um, I'm getting on here kind of late tonight because uh, I wanted to listen to Granado's uh, post game uh, presser. Uh, you know, it's he's very always articulate with the way he speaks, and you know, he always has uh, good things to say. You know, the way he, uh, not good things to say, but. The way he explains things, the de- and he, he goes into things with detail, and he doesn't really give you any, you know, BS answer the way we used to hear from, like, Ralph Kruger, um, you know, who was just kind of like a snake charmer with the way he talked. You know, same same uh, buzzword answers. It, you know, it was just annoying to listen to Ralph's, you know, uh, post-game press conferences. Uh, but not a good game, not a good performance from – top to bottom one thing that granado said is you know we got to start sustaining 60 minutes uh which i have you know we wish i think we all can agree we haven't seen a 60 minute effort from this team in quite some time um it's been abysmal to say the least uh you know and i I, here's the thing why i'm not worried is because like you are getting you you are seeing the strides forward in your core players. Like, right, what you want to say about Ross Vestelian. I am not worried about Ross Vestelian. I'm really not. I don't care what the analytics say. The kid has is on his third head coach in four years. He's came in the league at 18 years old as an offensive dynamo defenseman. And, yeah, he's going to struggle defensively. It's going to happen. Um, you know, on that giveaway on the power play, that's just as much on Victor Olsson as you could say. You put it on at Rastis Delling. He threw a terrible pass into his skates. He couldn't handle it right away, get it onto his stick. And then it's go all of a sudden going down the other way. And then where is the rest of your team there? By the way, you know, the, you know, the broadcast nailed him to the cross too. Where the hell is the rest of your team there? Like why is there a second opportunity after a shorthanded breakaway where he, got, he was able to cradle the puck, take a look, and then you had a guy coming up the gut uncontested that's that that's unacceptable unacceptable like i'm sorry it's unacceptable the whole team gave up on that play i don't care what anyone says they gave up that's unacceptable like every team gives up shorthanded chances every team makes mistakes on power plays but like to, to literally give little to no effort to get back into the play and back check to take away that second opportunity which ended up in the back of your net is a joke let's talk about the first goal Pissick mishandles uh, the puck behind the net. Couldn't maintain the possession. You have Darlene on the opposite side, hoping for a pass, like a D-to-D pass coming back to him. And nobody is contesting the guy coming up the middle. He's just up there alone. Where are your forwards? You don't have possession of the puck. Why Why aren't you in the zone, back-checking, providing support down low? Like, where are you? That's, that's, that's not just issues with your defense. That's your issues with five million as a whole. And that's been a thing for now for weeks is your five-man units aren't playing together as a team. You uh, Too often you have guys leaving the zone before you even have full full possession of the puck. You are losing so many battles in the neutral zone. You aren't back-checking hard enough. Like Everything that was going right for this team in the first like 10 games of the season isn't going right right now. You just you, you really just got to, you know, Go back to the drawing board and fix things and keep go back to some uh, keeping it simple, um, which is I think where you could see a guy like Rasmus Stalin maybe maybe turn turn his game around a little bit. Um, you know, keep keeping things more simple, not putting too much on himself uh, because of who he is and the minutes he's playing, and you know, attempting to be this defensive defense. And he's not, he's not that. He's just not. Um, and I've always been an advocate that sometimes the best way to play defense is to play offense. And when you maintain possession of the puck, you can drive play and you can, you can, you can, you you can contribute to the rush consistently. Like that's going to help your team defensively because regardless if, if you're maintaining possession of puck in their end, you're keeping the puck off the opponent's stick. 
you're not playing you're not playing defense in your own end, and we're just playing too much hockey in our own end. That's just the way it is. We're not driving play right now. It, it sucks. It, it's but it's true. Like I, again, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be an analytics guy. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be a guy who knows everything about Corsi and Fenwick. And I'm just not. I know very. I know. I know. I'm a novice. I'm gonna and, admittedly so. I'm like a novice when it comes to that. Uh, but you can see it on the ice. You, you see it. You, like you, you, they're not able to cons- to maintain possession in the uh, the offensive zone long enough to even really create chance. Like create consist- consistently create chances. Your neutral zone play is absolutely abysmal. Um, you lose too many battles in between the blue lines. It's a fact. Like just just watch the game. Uh, and again, you're just not getting the goaltending you need to be successful. Like again, <laughs> Craig as nice as Craig Anderson was to start the season, he is not on an NHL roster if it's not for the Buffalo Sabres. Aaron Dell is not on an NHL roster if it's not for the Buffalo Sabres. Dustin Tokarski is not on an NHL roster if it's not for the Buffalo Sabres. You know, uh <laughs> Malcolm Subad isn't on a roster if it's not for the Buffalo Sabres. That's your goaltending right now. Everything was very reliant on a 40-year-old goaltender to really like right like keep you guys competitive. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. But again, that's what this team was supposed to be this year. You weren't supposed to be a team that was gonna win a ton of games. A team that was gonna battle. You're giving younger guys more opportunities than they've gotten in the past. Your Tage Thompson, your Casey Middle stats. Your dollies, you're giving them more ice time and better opportunities, uh, opportunities that were given to your Jack Eichels, your uh, your 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 Sam Reinhart's uh, before this. You're allowing these kids to grow through opportunity and through struggle. There's going to be struggles. Every single player on this roster will and has struggled this season. I think it's been more prevalent over the last three weeks with Darlene than anything, and I get it. Like the guy has not been good in his own end. It's just, it's a different animal when you try and develop a forward than it is a defenseman. They just, they just take longer. You look at any defenseman and they're comparables. And again, I, again, I don't know analytics. I'm not going to sit and pretend to. But like guys like Ekblad, Victor Hedman, Morgan Riley, those guys all took a while to really come into their own. We're right around their fifth season. So if I'm judging Ross Stalin, I am judging him next year when the team around him isn't built to lose. You have a goaltender who's going to be able to bail you out with a save here and there. We haven't had that since Ryan Miller. I don't care what anyone says. Robin Lehner had his moments here in Buffalo, but like obviously he was dealing with his own issues. So like he wasn't able to be a guy that could go out there and consistently be a phenomenal goal, you know, starting goaltender for you. And I love Robin Lehner. I do. But this team also in front of him wasn't built to sustain six, be, be a sustainable, successful hockey team. It's just facts. And that's what you get when you have the kind of turnover at head coach and GM in 10 years. Six head coaches and four GMs in 10 years is a joke. It's a joke. And that goes to your your ownership and their inability to make the right hires. You know, I just, it, 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 it's, it, it's very disconcerting. But this is the first time, honestly, honestly, in 10 years, I felt this team finally has direction and purpose and is going to stick to a plan. And I think Granado is the right guy to lead lead this team with that plan. He's an unbelievable guy when it comes to player development. We've already seen it so far with the turnaround with Tage Thompson and, uh, you know, what Rasmus Osplund's done this season and what he's gotten out of uh, Casey Middlestan, what the player he's turned Casey into. Uh, you know, Victor Olsen is probably the best example you have, the, the five-on-five turnaround you've had with Victor Olsen. Like you look at that, and I know because the thing that separates those guys from a guy across the league, because I'm sorry, Darlene's talent compared to them is up here. The talent is there. It is. So let's just pump the brakes and give Granado that full season with him and let him figure it out. And I, I really do believe he will. I do. So that's just my opinion on that. Um, you know, their next game, I believe, uh, is, is a few nights away. Checking the schedule here. Let me check it out. I believe I want to say their next home game is the, uh, is against the Anaheim Ducks. I know that. Um, let's check it out here. Uh, 
yep, their next game is Tuesday against the Anaheim Ducks, a home game, a game I think I might be going to. Then Friday against the Rangers, and then they, uh, Alex Ovechkin comes into Buffalo uh, Saturday on December 11th. Uh, stay tuned to Two Goalies One Mike. We will have former uh, Washington Capitals goalie and one of the fan favorites, former Vezina Trophy winning goaltender Olaf Kolzig, should be joining the show on the 10th. So keep an eye out for that. We'll preview that game on, on the 11th. Um, a lot, again, a lot of, you know, little mistakes. Ended up in Buffalo, the back of Buffalo's net tonight. Um, you know, and one thing Granado said uh, in this presser is that first goal came way too easy. And it did. It did. You know, you, you can't, as a forward group, you can't just not back check there and pick up that guy coming up the gut. I'm sorry. Like, Mark Pissa can't, you know, give up the puck there. He can't. Um, and, you know, you have Dali on the other side waiting for that pass to bail him out. And then you have nobody, literally nobody, covering the front. Nobody. Like, nobody. Not a single forward is back. That's a joke. That's unacceptable. Um, when is Craig Anderson coming back? Um, right now, Rakeen, he is month to month. So I have a feeling that you are not going to see Craig Anderson coming back. I, uh, I think this might be the end of his career, unfortunately. And I've always been a huge fan of Craig Anderson. I wanted the Buffalo to sign him in the past as a like, veteran backup to Alinas Olmark. We did have Olmark. Um, unfortunately, it never happened. And we got him in a year where, again, a team that's not really built to win. Um, built to compete, but not to win. Um, and, of course, he gets injured. Um, not too sure what the timeline is, but, you know, maybe we get him for a few games at the end of the season, but month to month doesn't sound very promising. Um, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, uh, goal scorers tonight were both uh, Zemgis Gergensen's on a nice tip from the point, and then Henry Yoki Harju uh, gets on the board as well. Uh, and it's just, you know, a lot of – it was a lot, again, a lot of – Carolina take advantage of our simple mistakes and, you know, capitalize on them and us not taking uh, advantage of any of the mistakes that they were making. And it was, it was a tough game to watch. It really, really was. Um, again, final six to two uh, Carolina hurricane goal scorers or uh, Trocek who ended up getting a match penalty on the Tage Thompson. Hit. It's nice to see Tage uh, come back into the game and uh, end up not being hurt. Um, I forgot to mention him earlier. Another another prime example of Granado uh, turning, you know, developing and turning a player around is Tage Thompson. Um, you know, Nino Niederreiter with a goal and assist. Uh, Tara Vinen, two goals. Uh, Ian Cole, a goal. And then uh, Nikas with a goal. And then uh, Anti Ranta with 32 saves and 34 shots. Um we just need you also just when you're when you're trying to uh, sustain offensive pressure, you have to you know capitalize on your high danger chances. And Buffalo just didn't have a ton of high danger chances tonight. Again, I, again, like you know, I, I, normally I would be freaking out and normally I'd be losing my mind right now. But the fact of the matter is, this team. I'm, I'm not going to get too crazy critical of this team because of when you look up and down the roster, you see a lot of guys who maybe with what they've done this year, they might earn themselves like an NHL roster or maybe like a two-way contract next year. You know, your Vinny Hinnestrosas, um, excuse me, you know, you also have Will Butcher on this team who's been pretty much next to useless. Uh, Cody Eakin, you know, he's been a little bit of a surprise. He's had his moments this year. But, you know, Mark Pissick, you know, that guy's not going to move the needle forward for you, especially next season. I'm not even sure what his contract looks like. Uh, and just, again, you have a lot of guys here on min uh, league minimum deals. And, you know, I don't expect a lot of these faces to be in this line next year. I do expect to see guys like J.J. Paterka, Jack Quinn, uh, maybe Peyton Krebs up in the lineup. Maybe we see Owen Power, depending on how he feels about the direction of the team and what's best for his development. Because we all saw that he felt that. And it, I, I was a, a huge advocate of him staying in college. I wouldn't even be against him if staying in college again next year. I know people will be scared that he might take the route and, you know, go to, you know, you know, I want, I want him in Buffalo next year, but at the same time, you know, 
I don't know if management doesn't feel like he's ready or if, you know, if he doesn't want to come yet. I mean, that's completely up to him. I, I think that if he wins a national title though this year, even if he does, I think he still goes pro. Um, I don't, I say again, I don't want to rush players right now. I really, really don't. I don't want to rush a guy like Owen Power to get here just because we're so desperate for talent on our blue line. I, I just don't want to do that. Even though I think he's ready. I think he's definitely ready um, to make the jump as early as next season. That's just my opinion. Um, I'm sure there are many people out there who agree with me. There might be some people that don't agree with me. Um, but I also don't want to rush him. So, again, we'll see what happens. Um, but that being said, again, Sabres don't play till Tuesday. They welcome uh, Trevor Zegers and the Ducks into Buffalo. I believe that might be an ES- ESPN Plus game. So make sure you subscribe to ESPN Plus to be able to watch it. Uh, hopefully we get Bucci in Buffalo again. You know, you know how much he loves the city of Buffalo. Maybe you can get a few pints with him downtown Buffalo if you guys head to the game. I'm sure he'll always oblige a free beer. Uh, with that being said, though, guys, I'll hang up and listen. I am not going to take up too much of your time. Now. I know I kind of got in here kind of late tonight. Again, I wanted to watch the Don Granado press conference. Um but pretty much what I re, you know what I, to recap that it was just you know you 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 have a team a team that made a lot of little mistakes today that ended up in the back of your net and you just couldn't take advantage of Carolina's mistakes and the skill and the talent level really sh- was really prevalent for Carolina over Buffalo tonight the way they were able to move the puck. Their power again. Our power play has been abysmal too. By the way, it's been an absolute joke. So that needs to be fixed too, because that's going to help you win games as well. Uh, be able to dominate on special teams, which is something that Buffalo was doing to start the season, and it's just been really non-existent the past few games. Um, you really need to fix that power play. I still don't think Victor Olson looks like the same guy right now. I still think he might be kind of nursing this injury that he had. Um, I, I still think that he's a little hesitant to really, you know, really let it go when he shoots the puck because I just haven't seen the same zip on his shot um, that we that we're used to seeing. I, uh, you know, it's disappointing. Um, but, you know, when he gets healthy and this team, uh, I mean, he, as of right now, we're made to believe that he is healthy. He just, you know, there's just something to be, more to be desired there with Victor Olsen, especially, you know, from his spot on the power play. He just doesn't seem like he's playing with that same intensity, shooting with that same intensity. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, another thing Granado said was that, uh, you know, one of the positives the silver lines you take out is these guys, when they make mistakes, they realize what the mistakes are, and they're correcting them. They're willing to correct – not willing. They're, they're correcting them. They, they don't need to be – the horse doesn't need to be led to water and, you know, made to go in. They know what they're doing wrong, and they're they're going to make the adjustments, and they're going to fix it. And that's what I like when I listen to Granado. It's just like he's very honest and very forth, forthcoming uh, with his answers. And, you know, I believe when he says that, and I watch – you see you see the players on this team that have really turned their, turned their careers around under Don Granado, and you have to believe it. You have to believe that he's he's not bullshitting you. Like these kids are aren't just going to go home and take a few days off. They're going to be watching film. They're going to be, you know, on the ice maybe on their own time or you know maybe you know, uh, in a, a voluntary practice maybe is you know maybe on Monday or something like that and just you know really working on fixing the issues that you know ended up with six goals in the back of their net tonight and with them only scoring twice. So, but again, guys, I will hang up and listen. I don't want to, uh, again, for the second time saying this, take up too much of your time tonight. I know most of you probably won't even see this until tomorrow just because, uh, again, I got on here kind of late tonight. So with that being said, guys, I'll hang up and listen. Remember, this is brought to you by Outlet Liquor, the place to buy a case. And, uh, you know, we will talk to you later. And let's go, Sabres.